Hi, Andy Nelson here. So when I was a kid, we used to have this uh, product we buy called Shrinky Dinks. I don't know if those are still around, but it was essentially kind of a sheet, plastic material that was thin. You could uh, basically color in uh, kind of pre-printed or uh, drawings that were on it, and then you put it in the oven, and it would shrink down into a hardened plastic, and it'd be a keychain or maybe something on a necklace or what have you. And I think you could free draw things as well. So you might free draw. Luke Skywalker, or you might free draw, you know, a Volkswagen symbol or Mercedes symbol or something like that. And I guess what I'm thinking is, hey, those were some kind of early forms of what we might call today as uh, as fan art, okay? And fan art, these things that pay tribute to, you know, characters and brands and storylines that we all love, that is uh, the business for some people today. That is their business is creating fan art for people. And fan art can create some legal exposure for a lot of folks trademark issues potentially if you're suggesting connection with another brand uh, names words logos uh, slogans things like that um, and it could create copyright infringement problems uh, if you are duplicating or making derivative um, works of art um, that are close to other expressive works owned by other people um, so a lot of folks are operating out there with this potential exposure and they're often operating under a few myths that exist out there that I want to dispel. One, two, three. Number one, uh, the first myth is if I do not sell my product, uh, I am in the clear. That is not going to be true. Uh, copyright infringements in particular does not require that you actually sell something and frankly neither does trademark law if you are promoting or offering something um, and it suggests connection sponsorship affiliation with the brand owner uh, that could be trademark infringement and if it just merely uh, duplicates or is substantially similar to the expressive work or is derivative of it that could create copyright uh, for infringement exposure so selling not selling is not a determinative factor at all. So that's myth number one, and that's out. Um, number two, uh, there's this concept of fair use that uh, floats around the internet. It is a legal concept. It typically applies to copyright law, um, and in a sense it applies to uh, trademark law as well, although we might characterize fair use as more of a, a First Amendment protection. But a lot of folks think that I'm using this fairly, a self-described fairly using someone else's property, and therefore I'm in the clear. That's not true. Fair use is a very complicated question. The First Amendment protection uh, for certain um, uh, creations is also a very complicated question, and it's a defensive question. So if someone complains and you get caught up in a dust-up, otherwise known as a lawsuit, <laughs> um, you're going to be in the position to prove that uh, what you're doing is fair use under the law and that is a complicated analysis and it's not a cheap analysis so um, it may protect you but there's no way to just check boxes and know that you're going to be in the clear so that is myth number two um, and myth number three and this is an awful one uh, is uh, this myth that if you as a creator change something by a certain percentage that you're going to be in the clear. And I've heard, what I hear most often have over the years is 30%, but sometimes you're 10, 15, 20, all kinds of numbers. If you change the original artwork or the original property by X percent, you're okay. That always floats around, it continues to float around. I don't care what the number is, it's not correct. It is a myth. Uh, there is no uh, clean, bright line um, percentage uh, change that will insulate you from exposure and certainly not a complaint. So those are the three myths to watch out for. Fan art is a great thing. A lot of companies do not do anything about it uh, because if your artwork is tasteful and even if you sell it sometimes, they like it because it promotes uh, their own brand. Uh, two, if they crack down, that often has a publicity backlash. Eh. Um, so it's tolerated, but, but different owners tolerate it at different levels. So point is, don't fall. Uh, pray to the myths um, and if you're going to engage in fan art do your research find out if you can uh, how the property owner protects their own properties how aggressive they are about it and be very careful if you have any questions about this video uh, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment I look forward to hearing from you bye bye